I want to write a true love story, but I don't know when it started, so I don't know where to begin. I can remember Jimmy when he was in the seventh grade, a very small young man, very quiet, unpretentious. I have anything any child could want, and I didn't appreciate it. Always beneath the surface was something that was irritating. Like I, I didn't belong, I didn't fit, and that beer took that away. Even when he was drinking, he always read, he always wrote, and he always liked to go to poetry readings and museums. I used to ask myself, what did I do to deserve this? Now, I find myself asking, what did I do not to deserve this? When I heard about Jimmy's getting into trouble and robbing a bank, I could not believe it. I'm against the wall like this. There's one policeman with a shotgun at the back of my head, and another policeman with a pistol at my temple. And what frightened me so much was his hand was trembling like that with the pistol. And I thought to myself, if I fart, I'm dead. That's the old state prison. I spent uh, four years there uh, as an inmate. It was a fantastic place to write. My two charge partners and some other guys were uh, discussing several books that we had recently read. And uh, I found that he was interested in poetry. We invited him to join the book club. I had 25 years total, and I went there thinking that I would probably be killed or have to kill somebody. The poetry sort of gave me something to hope for. He got out and never looked back, but he never forgot where he came from and the mistake that he made getting him there. The bad guys always appealed to me. The, uh, the pool sharks, uh, the three card Monty players. I saw all these people on Jefferson Street when I had my paper route. Any Saturday night, you could see Jefferson Street just buzzing like a bunch of bees. And everybody was dressed, man, you know, looking good. You wore your best stuff out. It's almost like, okay, I should wear this to church tomorrow, but I'm going to the club tonight. <laughs> I saw everybody down there. Aretha Franklin, James Brown. It was a time when African Americans said, I'm not going to ask someone else to validate me. I understand my music, my art, my culture. We were all one. And then all of a sudden, a highway comes through. It cuts the heart out of the black community. The interstate divided us. They really didn't like what was going on with the ideas of the young people. When they would sit on the counters, I mean, they, they were trained to uh, take that kind of abuse, you know, be knocked down on the floor, kicked, burned by cigarettes, spit on, and called all kinds of derogatory uh, names. Jefferson Street was the place to be, but we understand that it's become a decimated place. But does anybody in here know that when God connects up with that which is supposed to be dead, he can bring it back to life? When you walk down the street, you can feel the spirit of what Jefferson Street is all about. You can feel that soul. We have not allowed it to just die because we won't die. I am black, not because my skin is dark, but because there was a man who was forced to slave like an animal and was beaten until he bled from his wounds. And my spirit sees the blood. My spirit longs to heal those wounds. The experience that I have that might cause one person to act another way causes me to write a poem. These students can really see their own experiences through his eyes. I think they saw that poetry was something personal and real. His goal was to keep other people from making the same mistake he made. Your greatness is in picking yourself up, what you do to get up and set yourself aright again. I do a lot of things for a lot of people. That's because I'm blessed. Not just blessed to be clean and sober now, not dead or in prison, but blessed all along. 